We begin with breaking news. A mess on the 5 freeway in Burbank right now. Traffic is at a standstill after a car caught fire right in the middle of the southbound lanes. Yes, this is happening near the Burbank Boulevard off-ramp, or on-ramp, I should say. It's taking some time for the fire crews to get this fire completely out. No word yet if anyone is injured. All right, we're gearing up for yet another round of rain, taking a live look now at the radar as Southern California prepares for a wet weekend. And along with the rain, the storm system will also bring frigid temperatures. It's cold out there right now. This is what it looked like tonight at the Cajon Pass. Snow levels are expected to drop overnight, which could cause delays in our local mountains. Also, might see some snow on the grapevine tonight. Overnight, causing concern for drivers along the five in the morning. The rain and the snow expected to arrive within the next couple of hours. But will your weekend be a washout? Mm. That's the question. We have team coverage tonight, including CBS 2's Garth Kemp, with a look at what we can expect. Garth? Yeah, Pat, well, we are tracking quite a bit of action right now to the north still. This is going to be not a big rainmaker. We're going to get between a quarter to an inch of rain for the first system coming through the area. But what we're talking about now is pretty good rain moving through Santa Barbara right on schedule at 1101. You can see those dark purples. Those are winter weather advisories all the way up through the grapevine. We will quickly start to bring uh, the snow levels down rapidly. If you go Going out towards Barstow area, the 40 to 15 Vegas out to the Colorado River. Wind advisories there, but these snow levels are going to come down rapidly. That will probably drop an inch to two inches of snow up into the grapevine. We'll talk about that. I'll show you the rain. We'll give you the rest of the weekend. Grammy weekend as well. We'll talk about that weather, if it'll rain there or not. All coming up in a few minutes. Back to you guys. All right, Gar, thank you. Now, breaking news in the Mid City area an online sale turned into a shooting in a supermarket parking lot. Now, two attempted robbery suspects are on the run. CBS 2 Sarah Donchi is live on the scene with the latest. Sarah. Yeah, Pat and Jeff, obviously things are looking very calm here now, but that was not the situation earlier. It was a bit chaotic out here outside of this Vaughn's grocery store, specifically in the parking lot. In fact, we have some video to show you from earlier when there were about a half dozen officers, maybe more out here. It all happened just before 9 p.m. A man came here to buy a cell phone from somebody that he met online. Well, when the two guys showed up, to sell it to him, they actually tried to rob the man. They grabbed the money, but the guy fought back. Police said that he put up a fight, and that is when one of the men pulled out a gun and fired it right into the ground. The good news is that the victim was not shot and nobody else was hurt. But at that moment, the two men ran off with the money, and police have not seen them since. Uh, they say they don't have a very good description of the two men. They couldn't tell me exactly what he was wearing, but they did say that the victim was okay. And just a little while ago, police came out here, took down the crime scene tape. They were glad that nobody was hurt, but they do have their work cut out for him, for them trying to find these two suspects. And they say that the moral of this story is if you plan to sell something or buy something with somebody you met online, the very best place to do that is at a police station and not outside of a business like this. And they say in this situation, they do not have any surveillance video. So again, they have to comb the area to try and find these two suspects. Reporting live from the Mid-City area, Sarah Donchi, CBS 2 News. Great advice you gave there, Sarah. Now, Hollywood director and comedian Kevin Smith says a stranger is stalking his teenage daughter. Calling you the f out. Right around the corner. That Instagram post is raising all <clears throat> kinds of alarms. The man is accused of harassing Smith's daughter online. Now, Smith is known for films like Jay and Silent Bob. On Twitter, he voiced his frustration, saying even though his daughter has filed a complaint with police, the man keeps getting closer to where they live. That rambling video was posted by Stardate Zero on Instagram outside a Hollywood office building. The LAPD says they are looking into the case. New evidence tonight could help police find a missing baby. Investigators have tracked down the stolen car that that six-month-old was last seen in. Tonight, officers are taking a closer look at this PT cruiser. They found it in South L.A. today. They're hoping it can tell them something about where Jackson Manson is. Police say Jackson's parents, Kiana Williams and Adam Manson, they're not talking. The baby was last seen with them New Year's Eve, but his parents have been in jail since early January, and the boy was reported missing two weeks ago. I don't think they hurt the baby. I really don't. I really believe that they have him, you know, somewhere, and they just refuse to tell. Never saw anything other than that little boy being showered with love and affection. That's all I ever saw. They were very doting parents. Police have spoken to family and to friends. They're also asking anybody with information, please come forward. 
Well, tonight the CHP is trying to track down the gunman who shot a child on the 15 freeway. The family was traveling northbound through the Cajon Pass near Cleghorn Road when another car pulled up to it. Then someone opened fire, striking the 10 year old in the head. And while they were driving up the freeway, that she heard a loud gunshot. And when they pulled over, and they're like, everybody said, "You guys okay?" Uh, my cousin, I mean my nephew, he said that while well, he was he wasn't he wasn't conscious. The child's injuries are serious, but not life-threatening. Detectives are asking for the public's help just to try to identify that shooter. Well, many families who lost their homes in the devastating California wildfires are getting some much-needed cash. A group of Major League Baseball players called California Strong raised some major money for the team. Or for them, I should say. CBS 2's Hermela Aragawi was there as the checks were handed out. People who lost their homes in the Woolsey fire show gratitude to a few hometown athletes who are giving back. We all grew up in these communities. We all saw what happened. We were all affected by it. Christian Yelich and his fellow Milwaukee Brewer teammates are from the areas affected by the fire. Together, they created California Strong and raised a million dollars and counting for families who lost their homes. Those families, about 150 of them, picked up their checks today. I think it's just outrageous that they put this together for us and. It's, it's so, um, so helpful. This is amazing. This truly is going to be helping us and helping a lot of people. Bracken and Crosby Webb have three young children. We followed them to what used to be their home. It's always so hard coming back here. The couple lived here for 10 years. It's the only home their three children know. What I miss the most is um, my skate ramp over there. They say they evacuated in the middle of the night three months ago, never imagining they would lose everything. Emotionally and it's kind of weird to receive help. You know, we obviously need it. Super grateful for everything. I saw, you know, people from our community here um, also there picking up checks. So you see where the money's going and you're seeing young athletes that my boys look up to spread kindness and create this organization. Huge example for the kids. The million dollars will be split between the victims here and those who lost their homes in the Paradise Fire up north. More than 280 families there will be picking up a check. Reporting in Westlake Village, Hermela Argawi, CBS 2 News. Developing story now. Troubling new facts coming to light about the pilot involved in the Yorba Linda plane crash. The LA Times reports Antonio Pastini had been disciplined for dangerous flying. The paper says he had his pilot's license yanked twice, once back in 1977 and again in 1980. Pastini's Cessna came apart and crashed into a Yorba Linda home Sunday, killing Pastini and four people on the ground. The search of a known gang member's house last night in Fontana uncovered an underground shooting range. Fontana police posted these photos on Facebook. They say a number of weapons were found along with thousands of rounds of ammunition. All of the evidence was seized and arrests were made. You could be in for a surprise when you file your taxes this year since the vast majority of the new tax code went into effect in 2018. CBS 2's Stacey Butler is live in Newport Beach to explain. Stacey. Yeah, Jeff, I spoke with a tax accountant here. He told me that some people are going to get a much smaller refund, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're paying more in taxes. He said still a lot of others are going to be in for a big shock. I do not like taxes. Truer words were never spoken, especially this year. As tax season begins, many are asking, uh, What happened to my refund? It's a question Newport Beach financial planner and tax consultant David Hansich has been answering for his Orange County clients. The new tax code, he says, changed the withholding structure, taking less money out all year, anticipating that your taxes are going to be less. So at the end of the day, when they come in and do their taxes, they're going to find out there's no refund. They lowered their exemptions. I went from uh, getting a huge check to writing it, uh, a, a medium-sized check, you know. That's frustrating. I moved to Texas to get away from this, and I just moved back. But it does frustrate me because in Texas, I kept a lot more of my money. It's terrible. And um, as a business owner, it's just like from every end, we have to just pay, pay, pay. He says the real surprise will come for those who thought they could deduct unreimbursed employee expenses, but now can't. And for those who own homes with high property taxes and state and local income taxes, there's now a cap on what they can write off, just $10,000. I don't know how it's going to affect me. 
and I'm actually a little nervous because I used to get deductions and I used to get a refund. And now I'm not sure I'm going to get that refund and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to take my wife on a vacation this year. And another part of this new tax law that a lot of people are watching, new homeowners can now only write off their mortgage interest up to $750,000. That's the latest from Newport Beach. Back to you guys in the studio. Well, the acting U.S. Attorney General found himself in the hot seat on Capitol Hill today. Matthew Whitaker was asked about his oversight of special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation and... It got ugly fast. CBS 2's Dave Bryan joins us. For it that. was quite a hearing, and it shows the Democrats are really in charge of the House right now. That's one thing for sure. This was the House Democrats' first chance to confront Trump loyalist Matthew Whitaker, the acting attorney general, and they took full advantage of it. Confronting Whitaker on his past criticism of the Robert Mueller investigation and on his refusal to recuse himself from overseeing the investigation, but not getting many answers. Congresswoman, I don't disagree Mr. that Whitaker, a district court you may, judge You may that. be confused here. This may appear to be a contact sport, but it's not a gridiron, and I'm not letting you run out the time, okay? And so it went for more than six hours Friday as Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee pounced on acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker at a contentious hearing in Washington, attacking his credentials, his judgment, and his integrity. A hearing that started calmly enough. At no time has the White House asked for nor have I provided any promises or commitments concerning the special counsel's investigation or any other investigation. But some committee Republicans were outraged at what they charged was the Democrats' heavy-handed treatment of Whitaker. It's really disappointing. At first, I was mad. I didn't, a reporter asked me, what do you think of the hearing? I, I said, it's a joke. But this is nothing more than a character assassination. We're going to have plenty of theatrics. Bring your popcorn. I'm thinking about maybe we just set up a popcorn machine in the back because that's what this is becoming. It's becoming a show. But Whitaker also occasionally poured gasoline on the fire, like when he called out the committee chairman for exceeding the five-minute limit on asking questions. Mr. Chairman, uh, I see that your five minutes is up, and so um, <laughs> I'm, we, 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 I am here, I'm here voluntarily. I, we have agreed to five-minute rounds. And Mr. Attorney General, we're not joking here, I'm and your humor is not acceptable. So, Whitaker will likely be replaced next week by William Barr, who's expected to be confirmed as Attorney General by the Senate. But the Judicial Committee chairman today was so angry about Whitaker dodging most of their questions that he wants him to return for a deposition in the coming weeks. And the chairman said he may issue a subpoena. Jeff and Pat, back to you. Wow. Fireworks. Dave, thank you. All right, she is an amazing singer, a great songwriter, and a movie star from time to time. Yeah, well, tonight, Music Airs is showing the love by honoring Dolly Parton with its Person of the Year tribute. And CBS News' Brittany Hopper is live in downtown L.A. with highlights from the star-studded show. Brittany. Oh, Pat and Jeff, what an amazing event tonight. So many artists are still inside honoring the great Dolly Parton. I have to say, it was such an honor because... She gave me a hug on the red carpet tonight. Oh my, no! Oh my I think it's made my life. The oh, legendary yes, Dolly Parton. Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. Was recognized tonight as the 2019 Music Cares Person of the Year, one of the most prestigious events during Grammy Week. Well, it's a great compliment to think that you've lived long enough to be able to have a night like this, to be honored with all these wonderful artists singing my songs. And it's for a wonderful cause. Yes. And uh, so it's just great. I, I'm so excited. Some of the biggest names in music performed on stage tonight. Miley Cyrus, Katy Perry, Garth Brooks, and Trisha Yearwood, just to name a few. Every song tonight you'll go, oh my God, that, oh my God, I, I, and you just start losing count, and that's why she is who she is. Yeah, she just changes the energy. You know the minute Dolly Parton's on the property, right? So she's just special. Other artists performing on stage, like Brandi Carlile, who's up for six Grammy Awards on Sunday, says Dolly Parton has paved the way for so many female artists. I mean, it's Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton is the undisputed queen of country music, an accidental feminist, a supporter of LGBTQ people, long before it was cool. 
and she's my hero. Proceeds from tonight's event supports Music Cares, a foundation founded by the Recording Academy that ensures music people have a place to turn to in a time of need. Hold me closer and I feel no pain every beat of my heart. Now, this event is in its 29th year, meaning it has raised so much money helping so many people. We are live tonight in downtown L.A. I'm Brittany Hopper. Back to you guys in the studio. That's the best reaction that I've ever seen, Brittany. In fact, I took the liberty of tweeting that out <laughs> on my own Twitter account. I loved it. It was so genuine and sincere. And I retweeted it. I agree with that. <laughs> Brittany, thanks so much. CBS is your home for the Grammy Awards. Watch the Grammys this Sunday right here on CBS2. And be sure to watch CBS2 News after the Grammys. I have a sit-down interview with Grammy nominee Nipsey Hussle. Okay, more snowfall expected on the grapevine tonight, and drivers might even have to chain up tomorrow morning on other mountain roads. Some of them are already taking precautions. Yes, yeah, several truck drivers are not taking any chances and parking their big rigs for the night. CBS 2's Jeff Nguyen is live in Lebec with a look at the conditions right now. Boy, you look cold, Jeff. Oh man, it is windy up here as we approach the freezing point. The clouds have been rolling in, and pretty soon the roads through the grapevine may become dangerous. Tonight, the temperature dipped in Lebec as snow is expected to fall in the hours ahead. That's why Frank Stark has the bed of his truck weighed down with sandbags and about 200 pounds of firewood. He's also carrying around some packed snow. So that helps to, you know, add more weight. It just helps it to grab is all. It is not going to stop you from fishtailing if you're going too fast or anything like that. At this truck stop, a number of big rigs have called it a night before the road gets slippery. Popping off the gas tank is part of the preparation. <laughs> Robert Pulsifer and his family live in Fraser Park. They filled up and made sure they headed home from a night out before the weather got rough. With snowfall in the forecast, people who live in the area are asking snow bunnies to be careful, not just on the road through the grapevine, but also when they get up into this community. You're only talking about a two-lane road. And the shoulders are impassable at times. They pull off, they're stuck, and then people will block the road. It's dangerous because they have little kids walking by the road and it's icy, and the parents aren't holding their hands, and then they leave a lot of trash. And Remember to check the latest road conditions before you head out the door, and also carry chains if you are heading up to the mountains this weekend. For now, we are live in Lebec. Jeff Nguyen, CBS2 News. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, hopefully Jeff can come out and uh, get into some warm <laughs> weather soon, but I guess uh, more. T oh, Garth is laughing. <laughs> no, 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 I'm laughing because I just actually talked to a friend of mine in Minnesota. It was 15 below, so it's cold as we get it here. Oh. Yeah, I know. It's like it's windy up there, but you know, it's not as cold as what we've seen, Pat, but we're going to get those winds. And when the winds hit you, that's where you get the problem. They're 51 degrees right now. East winds at around five. We'll get Jeff out of there and back where it's just a little bit warmer. It's not much warmer around here, though, uh, as we're in the low 50s, upper 40s in most spots. You'll see a 37 look at Riverside. So it's wind still there. 30 Big Bear, 53 Santa Ana, and 46 right now up in Aventura. 63 is where we hit it for today. Winter weather advisories continue all the way up the Grapevine, up by where Jeff was. You can see through Zoal areas by LeBec, Fraser Park, moving their way down south. The snow levels are going to come down rapidly, so you could see a couple of inches towards the grapevine. And if you get any rain, too, the problem is that fear, it freezes so quick under the overpasses, over the underpasses, that's the quickest spot, and that's when you run into some real issues. So be very, very careful or just wait it out till after daybreak and let things get back to normal. Meanwhile, there's some of the rain we're checking out towards Santa Barbara, the heaviest of the showers moving in through that area over the Channel Islands right now. You can see the low snow levels up towards Ojai working their way, but right now we're doing pretty good as we move to the evening hours tonight. You can see from Malibu all the way up, we start to watch the snow fly up on the five, and then you can see the rain coming down as we cross Fillmore into Oxnard over towards Malibu. We're between a quarter to an inch of rain.
by the time this is all said and done. So, Jeff and Pat, I think we can go ahead and handle this as far as the burn areas go. That's an extended period. And then you can see out by tomorrow morning, the bulk of it moves through in towards the IE. The mountains start to pick up some more snow as well. We start to take a break throughout the rest of the day. You might be some puffy clouds out there and just a little bit of action, but I think by the evening we get a break and then we watch for Sunday yet again as another system will start to move through the area. But this one will put down less rain. So by 5 30 Sunday morning, you can see some light showers through there as we week away through late morning. There's a little more rain coming through the afternoon. And then just by the afternoon, late afternoons, we get ready for the Grammys. Things should be good. But once again, snow will be flying up on the five. Be cool up into that area. Drive safely. Like I said, wait it out. It's just the safest and best thing to do. You don't need any accidents or people sliding into you. That's the other problem, right? It's crazy. 59 to 60 tomorrow downtown. Little break. Bigger rain we're looking for is next Thursday and Friday. How cold is it up in Minnesota quickly where they're used to handling everything? It is so cold, salt won't even work on the roads up there. They've had some major issues. So for us, just wait a little bit. You'll be good to drive. Hey, is the airport closed? Nope. No, they do roll Still well up for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah they de-ice those wings. Yeah, they do. Been there, done that. Yeah. All right, thanks, Garth. Well, Coca-Cola is rolling out its first new flavor in more than 15 well, that's years. Amazing. That's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Hey, you'll see what's about to hit the store show. Plus, it's not just cats who have nine lives. Just before Colbert, the dramatic rescue of this dog who was pulled from a burning home with no Aww. heartbeat. Hey, if you haven't already, be sure to check out our podcast, Flawed Justice, the Kimberly Long Story. Randy Page spent months looking into the murder case that sent the Corona mom to prison. But is she innocent? You'll find it on podcasting apps like Apple Podcasts and on flawedjustice.com.